American Indian. If you're going to deal with justice, what if wait, just a minute. If you're going to deal with justice, listen to what I'm going to say. Go ahead. If you're going to be a just people in this society, this land here really belongs to the so-called American Indian. Who took it right. That's justice. Now, if you're going to talk about Christ, you've got to go back to the law of justice. The Bible says if you move another man's plot, move his, his uh, insignia from his plot, from his plot of land, that is wrong. And you have to pay for that. It's the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 44. Let us now praise famous men and our fathers that begat us. The Lord have wrought great glory by them through his great power from the beginning. Such as did bear rule in their kingdoms, men renowned for their power, giving counsel by their understanding and declaring prophecies. Leaders of the people by their counsels and by their knowledge of learning meet for the people, wise and eloquent in their instructions. Such as found out musical tunes and recited verses in writing. Rich men furnished with ability, living peaceably in their habitations. All these were honored in their generations and were the glory of their times. There be of them that have left a name behind them, that their praises might be reported. And some there be which have no memorial or perished as though they had never been, and are become as though they had never been born, and their children after them. But these were merciful men, whose righteousness have not been forgotten, with their seeds shall continually remain a good inheritance, and their children are within the covenant. Their seeds stand fast in their children for their sins. Their seeds shall remain forever, and their glory shall not be blotted out. Their bodies are buried in peace, but their name liveth forevermore. The people will tell of their wisdom, and the congregation will shoot forth their praise. Reuben is a Seminole Indian, Gad is a North American Indian, Asher is a Brazilian Indian, Natalie is an Argentinian Indian, uh, Issachar is a Mexican Indian. Those are the real tribes of Israel, according to the scriptures. Now, if the cameraman can come back to this, I'd like to focus on this. The real Jews are black, like this relief from the walls of the tombs of Egypt shows. See that? It clearly shows that they're black people. Now, the caption under this says, brick making by the Jews in Egypt. Now, this is in the back of a Bible. Through the Bible, they got pictures of Europeans, false pictures, like this picture here of Christ. That's a false image. Christ is not a so-called white man. Matter of fact, we're going to go and read some of the scriptures. All the children of Israel were so-called black people. Jeremiah 14, 2 tell you that Judah was black under the ground. I'm going to read that now. Jeremiah, the 14th chapter, and the second verse says this. You are born, and the gates they are blameless. They are black unto the ground. So that's telling you that the tribe of Judah is the color of the earth. If you dig up the earth, it's different shades of brown. Now we're going to the book of Amos, and we're going to find out the color of the whole nation of Israel. Amos, the ninth chapter, and the seventh verse says this. Bear with me a minute. Are you not as the children of the Ethiopians unto me, O children of Israel? So what is that saying? That's saying that the Israelites look like the Ethiopians. Now, I want to go and get the color of Christ, because the color of Christ is in it. Also, Christ's birthday is in the Bible. So I'm going to the book of Revelation, and we're going to see what color Jesus Christ is. This is Revelation. I'm going to read the first chapter and the first verse, the revelations of Jesus Christ. Now I'm going to jump down to the 13th verse and read down to the 15th. And in the midst of seven candlesticks, John on the Isle of Patmos saw this vision of Christ. One like
like unto the son of man, clothed with a garment down on his foot, and girded about the taps with a golden girdle, like you see us wearing girdles, because this is the customs of our forefathers. That's the reason why we wear girdles and all that. In the eastern garments, because it's the custom of our forefathers. Now the 14th verse, his head and his hands were white like wool, he had woolly hands, not like the image they show you, as white as snow, and he was fully gray. And his eyes were as a flame of fire, his eyes were red because he, had, he was a wine drinker, like it alluded to him in the book of Genesis, the 49th chapter, it says his eyes would be red with wine. And his feet, in the 15th verse, like unto fine grass as if they burnt in a furnace. So he was a very dark brown skinned man. Grass is brown, and if you burn it, it's very dark, meaning he's a very dark skinned man. Now, I'm going to go from there and go to the book of Luke, and I'm going to read about Christ's birthday. Because recently we had a holiday called Christmas, and they told you that Christ was born on December the 25th. That's a lie. In the book of Luke, the second chapter, and the 40th to the 42nd verse, it states this. And a child grew and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of the power was upon him. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of Passover. Passover coming in that. And when he was 12 years old, meaning on his 12th birthday, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. So that clearly states that Christ was born in the springtime on the Passover. Okay, now I'm going to pass it on to the next brother, my shot. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Yow, died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in death will God bring with him. But this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. But the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in the outside shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words.